So behind us, stretching away, you can see a ditch and a bank, and this forms part of the Cursus monument, the Stonehenge Cursus. This is a huge rectangular enclosure that runs all the way up to the gap in the trees that you can see on the horizon, and behind us runs for another kilometre and a half. This Cursus monument was discovered in 1723 by a, a man called William Stukeley, who was an antiquarian who was interested in prehistoric monuments. And when he first recognised this rectangular monument, he thought it was a chariot racing track, and he assumed it was a, a Roman monument, so he named it a Cursus or a Circus. Now we know that um, these monuments are actually much, much earlier. They are early Neolithic in date and this means that they were much older than Stonehenge. This one was built around a thousand years before the stones were put up at Stonehenge. Now we know of about 300 monuments like this across the country. Um, most of them have been ploughed flat, so we only know about them from excavation or from aerial photography or geophysical survey. This one's really unusual because we can still see the earthwork banks and ditches. When people have conducted excavations at Cursus Monuments, they haven't found any finds. There's no pottery or animal bones that indicate feasting or gathering. There's just the antler picks that were used to dig the ditches. So we don't really know what these monuments were used for. There's two different types of theories about these monuments. One is that they were routeways across the landscape. The other is that they might have formed barriers across the landscape um, so that they were restricting the movement of people and people with their cattle. So this is supported by um, small entrances which are found on the long sides of the rectangular monument, which does suggest that people are crossing the monument to get to another place.